Welcome to our service, wherever you are watching. We rejoice in the Lord who leads us beside still waters and gives us refreshment of soul. Christ our Shepherd shows us the way we should go so that the name of God will be glorified. Though all manner of evil befall us, we will not be afraid, for the great Shepherd of our souls is with us. We are never away from the love and mercy of the Lord, and we shall be with him for ever and ever. Amen. I'm filming on a beautiful, bright, sunny day, but like any other day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the first letter from John. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us to do. All who obey his commands abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. Hear the gospel of the Lord according to John. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Father, may these spoken words be faithful to the written word, and lead us to the living word, Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. I am from London, where the sheep are few and far between, but here in the Staffordshire moorlands they are very much in evidence, just as they were in the countryside where Jesus lived. 
As he was fond of using familiar concepts to illustrate his messages, the topic of sheep was quite a common one for him. There are seven I am statements by Jesus that are quoted by John in his Gospel. And today we are looking at the fourth of them. I am the Good Shepherd, he said. No one expects sheep to be responsible for themselves. Owners hired shepherds for that purpose. A shepherd's job was to accept responsibility for the safety and well-being of the flock. Most shepherds only took that to a point where it would threaten their personal safety, deciding that their life is worth more than that of a sheep. And I can well understand that position. A few would be willing to risk their lives to protect their sheep, but Jesus, our shepherd, knowingly and willingly died to save us, because there's no other way. That is what John's Gospel is telling us. But the letter from John, and it probably was the same John writing much earlier, the letter spells out some of the implications. If we love God, whose Son laid died his life for us, then in gratitude we should show our love for other people. Not, John writes, in word or speech, but in truth and action. John was writing to new Christians, following a new faith in a new church. His readership is unsure of itself. It needs support, it needs help, it needs guidance. There are disagreements among them, each convinced that their way is right. Some of them claimed that they were full of love for God, but they showed no love for each other, let alone for those outside their church. It's not like that here, is it? Or do some of you recognise some of this in those around you, or in yourselves? Surely not in me. So I do think that John was writing for me, and for each of us, because I think that we all fall short of God's standards. I know that I do. The people that it is most difficult to get on with are those that are closest to us, to our family and those that we share homes with. And particularly that's true in these difficult times when perhaps the family we live with are the only people we have any contact with. In his letter, just a few verses before our reading, John refers to the very first murder when Cain murdered his brother Abel. Yes, we do love those who are close to us, but often it is tough to do so. Loving other people needs to be practical. It means sharing what we have. It's more than good ideas, vague plans and holy thoughts. We must put them into action and show the truth by doing something about it. When we show love for other people, our hearts feel good. So John tells us, and we can feel bold before God. We need to live our lives showing love in truth and in action to those around us. Like shepherds and their sheep, we need to build up the trust of those we meet. We need to live our life believing that Jesus did lay down his life for us. We need to listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd and to learn to be shepherds ourselves. So Lord, guide us along the right pathways so that we may care for your sheep. Amen. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to the life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all 
the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. We pray for our church, for our part in Christ's mission here at Horton, Longsden, Cheddleton and Rushton. We seek your guidance and help us in the tasks to which you have called us in this benefice. We pray for our church in every part of the world, the great family of which we are part, for those who struggle against injustice, for people who live in violent, oppressive and exploitative situations, for those who live in hunger, isolation or fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for people who are ill, in hospitals, at home, or wherever they may be. And particularly we pray for those suffering as a result of the coronavirus, either directly or indirectly. Give them courage, hope and peace, and the knowledge that you are present in their weakness, pain and suffering. May the skills and knowledge of those who care for them be fully used to help and to heal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for those whose hearts have been saddened by the death of someone close and dear to them. Give to them the strong comfort which no one else can give. And let them know the comforting power of the resurrection of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Risen Christ, faithful shepherd of your Father's sheep, teach us to hear your voice and to follow your command, that all your people may be gathered into one flock to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, make, you, make us perfect in every good work to do his will. And the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be upon us, and all those we love this day and forevermore. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>